Greetings. What's on? Hey, what's going on, guys? I know what time it is, man. It's time for that live QA. Happy Easter, by the way. You know what I'm saying? What y'all, what y'all doing on uh what they call this resurrection Sunday? What y'all doing on resurrection Sunday? I know what I'm doing. I'm getting motherfucking wins. That's what I'm doing. As you can see, I'm getting my steps in. I figure why not give y'all some game to help y'all get to y'all goals, man, before the summer gets here. Barack Obama Fitness, what up? Applesauce was popping. I used to like applesauce back in the day. Dallas Mavericks, greetings. Larson, greetings. What's up, man? You know what I'm saying? Charles Bacon. <laughs> That's a good last name. What up, man? Mohammed Iqbal. What up? Donald Andrews was popping. Recent. We ain't going to do that. <laughs> Cowboy 88. The Yuka app is a game changer, bro. That's fucking uh, facts. I'm glad to hear that that's been helping you. XSO780, Corey, looking like he about to start on a Guy Ritchie movie and get killed in the first 10 minutes. I don't know who Guy Ritchie is, but <laughs> I know any movie that I'm starring in, I'm going to survive, right? I'm a survivor. Like, you know, Destiny's Child was talking about, you know what I'm saying? I'll be survivor. Or like Jeezy and Akon, soul survivor. You know what I'm saying? Jackie, what up? What's your least favorite food? Jack the Whack. <laughs> it's quite the name, my brother. Um, My least favorite food? You know, it's difficult to think about, right? Because if you don't like it, you don't like eat the shit, right? Like it's like, it's like a thing that I, it's the furthest away from my mind. Um, I guess if I'm thinking about my least favorite foods, uh, it would have to be things that like have a weird texture. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not, I'm not into like, I'm not into things that are like mushy and grainy at the same time. That's just kind of gross to me. Like cottage cheese. <laughs> Motherfuckers like cottage cheese. I cannot for the life of me understand why people like cottage cheese. It's is is mushy, creamy, and grainy. It's got the little chunks in there. Shit's wild. It's too many things happening in your mouth. Pause. Uh typically things like that, I'm just not really into. If it's like two different textures i usually don't fuck with it i heard you can gain muscle from eating potatoes but is it true you can gain muscle from eating any foods in a surplus to some degree but you have to be doing the right things as far as sending the stimulus to your body to actually adapt and build muscle and then also you, you got to get a good amount of protein in uh, i will say this you know if your testosterone levels are high enough you know, you can get away with not having adequate protein and still actually build a muscle. You know, there's some circles of thought around like the guys in prison, for example. You know, guys, you know how guys in prison are fucking jacked. But if you look at their diet, they're not like optimized on like protein intake all the time. You wonder how is it that they have so much muscle mass? Well, part of it's like they're in an environment where they can train, you know, pretty frequently. and That's all they do. But then the other side of it is. When you're in, a, in an environment where there's like heavy competition or hostility or there's a lot of like aggression, it actually elevates your testosterone levels. This is why guys, uh, you know, who fight, you know, you, you know, typically you see that they have more lean muscle mass than most because fighters are in that environment where their body has to prioritize being what aggressive, being able to fight, being able to defend themselves. Right. So it's a it's a natural uh, it's a natural mechanism that sort of ignites when you're in that type of environment. That's just some shit for y'all who happen to want to know that nerdy shit, right? I'm a purist in liking foods if it's pure form. White food is generally bad. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess. I guess you got a point there, man. Um, except white rice, man. I really fuck with white rice. I love it. Hey, bro, please tell me how often do you have cheat days and how much do you eat? 
You know, I've been getting a lot of people ask me about cheat days lately, and I feel like there's some sort of fascination with the idea of letting loose or getting yourself a break from the diet and, you know, all these things. But there's another way to look at this shit. Like, what if you ate in a way that you actually enjoyed every day? Right. And what if that way that you ate every day that you enjoyed was actually conducive to you achieving your fitness goals? Right. How much would you even really think about cheat days if that was the case? You probably wouldn't. You probably would just be like, oh, shit. Every day feels like a cheat day to some degree because it doesn't feel like I'm cheating on anything. It doesn't feel like I'm being deprived. It's kind of like being in a happy relationship. Like, why would you cheat on your girl if things are going well? If nothing's missing, there's no reason to cheat. Right. <laughs> some of y'all, some of y'all might have some aversion to that. Saying, oh, no, I, I need it all, man. I want all. Hey, shut up. You ain't talking. To me, right. So what is the point I'm getting at is. If you have a, a, a sort of attachment to the idea that, yo, I need to figure out what my cheat days need to look like, then maybe you're starting yourself off with a process that's not going to be sustainable anyway, because every single day you feel as though you're depriving yourself. How about you just eat in a way that can actually get you to your goals, right? That is something that you can do forever. That's why I teach my clients how to track macros, because when you track your macros, guess what? You can integrate your favorite foods into your macros just as long as you're hitting your macros so that you can you know lose weight and keep it off all right and if you're building a faster metabolism by getting stronger you'll actually be able to consume more foods over time so you won't feel this deprivation guys if if, if you want to learn how to do that right if you want to learn how to do that i wrote a whole course on it it's called the big belly blaster i'm giving it to y'all for free tonight just for pulling up go grab that <laughs> right go grab that that's 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 my thing but i guess you know that's my take on the cheat day shit i mean cheat days is cool right like i, I had a cheat day so to speak yesterday you know with my girl we went and got some sushi and steak but rice steak like every day <laughs> and, and i only have sushi when i'm like having a higher carb day to reset my metabolism so that's 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 my whole take on it man um guys if that was helpful drop a flex emoji in the comments i'm getting warmed up now i can take the jacket off all right bald jeff 58 what up <laughs> my lats feel big as hell that's great brad <laughs> keep doing whatever you're doing jack the whack who's your favorite youtuber I don't know if I have a favorite YouTuber because um, I don't think I watch enough YouTube to be like, hey, this is my favorite guy. I think by default, I would have to say it's the guy that I've watched the most uh, over the years. Right. So um, the guy that I watched a lot when I was first learning about fitness and I was, you know, out of shape and I wanted to learn how to you know, build muscle and lose fat and all that stuff. There's this guy named uh, Chris Jones. Shout out to Chris Jones from Pump Chasers. Uh, he's he's like my big bro, and he don't even know it. <laughs> I've been watching that guy's videos for years. He's inspired me a lot and given me a lot of uh, useful information. That's helped me help other people, man. So I, I guess that would be my favorite. <laughs> Where's James Harden Fitness at? Somebody, somebody's going to summon him. He's going to appear at some point. <laughs> Happy Easter. Uh yo corey i was wondering if i should start off with creatine for context i'm 135 14. thank you so much for all your work keep it up thank you mims all right i think that creatine is fine for you no matter what age you're at essentially your body does produce creatine on its own it's just when you're taking it exogenously you're taking like an additional dosage for the purpose of athletic performance recovery building muscle building strength so i think you're fine I, I i don't i don't know of any adverse effects to taking it at this stage in your life if that's what you're concerned with hillary gross what up how accurate do you think activity watches are as it relates to steps tracking they could be pretty accurate as it relates to calories right how many calories that you're actually burning i don't think they're accurate at all i've never seen 
an activity tracker that I felt like really tracked the amount of calories that I actually burn within the day. I don't trust them at all because a lot of them will overestimate your activity. They'll tell you some shit. Like I be having clients come to me and they'd be like, Corey, I just don't understand. I burn 2000 calories a day in my sessions. And for whatever reason, this belly won't go away. And I'd be like, 2000 calories. Where did you get that number from? Well, that's what my Apple watch says. Right. And I'm like, <laughs> if you really was burning that amount of calories, do you believe that it would be possible to overeat, you know, over exceed your calories to the degree that your belly just won't go away? And they're always like, well, I never thought about it like that. Well, yeah, that's because that shit that you tracking is some bullshit. It's just it's some number, right? I'm not I'm not saying it's completely useless, right? I use activity trackers and a lot of my clients do, but I don't think it's something that um you should like hedge your bets on. Like I don't think it's something that you should make decisions on um if this is successful or not. I think a better metric, guys, if you want to know my number one hack to utilize steps tracker, type steps in the comments. And I'm, I'm going to tell you what, what to do. Does anyone know the website? My question was ignored. Uh, Shy Gita, <laughs> you have to look at the... It's either in the comments, if you're on Facebook, it's probably in the caption. It's called the Big Belly Blaster. You just <laughs> just <laughs> you just go to the top of the live and look at the description and then you hit it. Um, but the, it's called BigBellyBlaster.com. <laughs> I'm going to drop it in the comments again, but if y'all on Facebook, I'm sorry. <laughs> Some, sometimes it shows up, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> uh, Corey, how do you make sure you're balking at an adequate pace and not too slow? Um, what's the adequate pace? What do you mean? <laughs> like, like, like the thing is, it's like adequate could be like a pound, half a pound, two pounds. It just depends on how much muscle you're gaining versus fat. So really the way to be able to determine what that looks like is actually track your body fat percentage the whole time you're balking. Because if you get to a point where let me stop the walking, you get to a point where like, you notice you starting to get fluffy as hell. Right. And you, you actually packing on more body fat than the muscle. Then maybe it's time to modify your approach. You know, maybe you got to adjust those calories or just kind of adjust your training in general so that you actually are putting on muscle mass. Thank you for all your advice. You're welcome, Vanessa. How do you feel about overnight oats? I think that's just overrated, man. <laughs> like, I feel like I feel like there's a subsector of people who like love overnight oats. Like, it's it's like they go to thing because it's no prep. Like, but you do got to let it sit overnight. Um, I just never got into it, so I'm sort of on the side of I don't understand why people are making oats to sit you know, in their fridge overnight when they can just pop it in the microwave when they're ready to eat and it's done in two minutes, right? I just feel like it's a a, a longer process than it needs to be. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, like, let's say, let, let's say you like somebody, right? And, um, you know, you in that stage where y'all getting to know each other and you ask them out on a date and they like, well, let me get to know you first. And it's like, yo, that's how I'm going to get to know you. What the fuck are you talking about? Right. Like <laughs> I got to go out with you. Right. That's kind of how I feel when like, you know, people put their oatmeal in the fridge overnight. I'm like, yo, you could just like eat it when it's time to eat, <laughs> you know, but that being said, that's not saying that it's unhealthy. It's actually pretty good. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's a lot of it's a lot of value in it. <laughs> Oh man. Okay. All right. Let's get into it. Is it also a good way to make sure you're progressing in workouts to assure you're building muscle? Uh is what a way? What are you what are you talking about, Parker? I need more context for that question. Uh Jose Lopez. I've been told that black coffee is nasty, but I've never tried it myself. Is it good? Listen, I don't drink it because it's good. I drink it for what it it does for me right so I, I i drink black coffee because it gives me energy in a fasted state and it also helps me you know to curb my appetite so that i'm able to intermittent fast and uh not notice like some of those implications of like oh man i need to eat you know what i'm saying or i'm craving some food and you know there's some science that shows that the caffeine helps to stimulate your metabolism in a way that your body starts to burn more calories so that's why i do it 
You know what I'm saying? I'm not I'm not looking for like taste when I'm drinking black coffee, man. You know, the thing about coffee or just pretty much any beverage, in my opinion, is it's is function over flavor. Right. Like a lot of people feel like if they ain't got some sugar in their mouth when they drinking something, then then something's wrong. Right. And a lot of what I have to say to those people is um, you need to get a fucking hobby, man. Like if the only joy you experience in life is when you get some sugary sweetness in your mouth. Like maybe maybe you need to reevaluate like what you find joy in in life. Like I feel good enough just being me to where <laughs> I don't need these extra things to feel good about myself. Like I, I I feel good enough just looking the way I look, feeling the way I feel every day and, um, you know, contributing value to people like that shit gives me more joy than adding some creamer and sugar to my fucking coffee. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how I look at it. Yo, Randy, what up? LeBron or Michael Jordan? Uh, I mean, it's kind of difficult to say either one of them, right? When you, when you putting them against each other, like you know, LeBron's an all-time scoring leader in the NBA history, and he's like old as hell. He's still balling. <laughs> he's still like one of the best players in the league. MJ dominated the league and kind of set the way, like was the stepping stone for a lot of these, you know, modern day NBA superstars, LeBron included, you know, there is no LeBron without, you know, um, MJ. So I, I would say that, uh, you know, LeBron is the best, the most complete pay player there ever has been, you know, um, as far as just across the board, everything, offense, defense, playmaking, um, IQ, he's, he's the best to ever do everything well, but MJ is the best, closer score and most dominant player to ever live so it really just depends on what context you're putting them in you know yeah smooth says complete yeah lebron is complete like he there's no missing part in his game um the only thing that's missing from lebron's game is his hairline you know what i'm saying and that's at that point you get into semantics that have nothing to do with basketball <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> you know MJ was a defensive player of the year 10 times. MJ all day. You can't go wrong with that pick. Either one of these picks, you can't go wrong, guys. <laughs> uh, Mike Crowley, what up? <laughs> LeBron has been in, on his prime basically his entire career and is still going. Yeah, <laughs> that's a fact. <laughs> Uh, Nikolai says, my beard is keeping you big. You got a good point. Uh, Chris Sanchez, can you put on muscle while eating in a calorie deficit and lifting weights? I'm 195 and I want to lose lower belly fat, love handles, and my goal is to get lean and have real muscle definition. I would say that it is possible to build muscle in a deficit. However, it is not possible to target muscle growth in the deficit, right? Like the thing about it is to build muscle effectively, the most optimal way is to actually create a surplus of calories. So now you have additional nutrients to energize you to actually power through your workouts and send that strength building signal effectively. But also you're giving your body the actual nutrients it needs to build muscle. You know, I always use the analogy of imagine you like wanted to get a house built for you. Right. And you had like the you know, you had the blueprint. Right. And you hire some contractors to come out there and actually do the project. If you sent the contractors out with a blueprint, but no bricks, guess what? You ain't getting no fucking house. Right. They leave <laughs> and they taking the money. Right. But if you would send them out to the project site with actual materials to build that house, then they can build you the house that you originally wanted. And that's the equivalent of giving your body the nutrients that it needs to build muscle. Right. So that's why it's optimal to have a surplus of calories so that you can, you know, essentially have the bricks to build the house. That is you. Um, sometimes when you're new to the gym or you're sort of introducing a new stimulus, you can build muscle in a deficit. But again, that has its limitations and it's, and it's like next to impossible to really target. OK, anybody's telling you that you can do that. They're probably not telling you the whole story, right? Like there is a there's a segment of the population who talk about, you know, losing fat and gaining muscle at the same time. They're typically talking about something that I call phasing, right? 
phasing is like this you spend a few weeks focusing on losing fat and then you spend a few more weeks focusing on building muscle i've done it in like eight week cycles for my clients so for example eight weeks i had a guy you know shed 10 pounds of fat and then the next eight weeks we focus on gaining 10 pounds but we wanted it all muscle and we tracked the whole way through and he did what's called a recomp that's what all these dorks online be fucking talking about that's all it is man you just you just go through cycles of it hopefully that was helpful love cool c uh let yes it works for both losing weight and gaining weight yeah man how do you feel about eddie abu i don't even know who the fuck that is thoughts on santa cruz medicinals i don't know who that is either <laughs> is a seven day training with saturday and sunday being cardio good or bad i got a few clients on that i think it's solid if you want more context on how you should train go ahead get that big belly blaster that's in the description of this video i'm giving it out to y'all for free it teaches you the ins and outs of what you need to lose fat gain muscle get ripped keep that fat off long term right and still enjoy what enjoy life man uh what can i do to bulk at 13 i'm 110 create a calorie surplus <laughs> and stay consistent in the gym man um what's the importance of pre-workout and post-workout supplements there's not a lot of importance in any one of them like you can you can get all the results you want to get with losing fat and building muscle without e either of those right you, you don't need supplements to lose fat or build muscle can they aid in that process sure but you don't need them you know you need the shit i'm talking about right now like you need to understand what your calories should look like what your macros should look like you need a solid training protocol that's actually geared towards the goal that you set for yourself you need to just stay consistent and the only way you're gonna stay consistent if you know what to stay consistent too so you got to be tracking your shit or else it don't matter you're just gonna fall off uh how can you do intermittent fasting oh hold up you are big as hell okay thank you <laughs> hey i appreciate that man how can you do intermittent fasting and building muscle if you have to eat protein right after your workout the anabolic window because the anabolic window is some bullshit, man <laughs> you don't need to do the anabolic window to retain muscle mass or build muscle man the anabolic window for all of y'all that's not fucking youtube dorks right that you don't surf the internet all day basically there's this science out that says that once you break down your muscle fibers in a training session right so you do like some strength training you break down your muscle fibers you have a few hours where your body's more anabolic meaning it's more receptive to the protein to actually convert it into new muscle and retain the muscle that you have the problem with that ideology is it supposes that if you miss that window of time whether it be an hour after your workout or two after hours after your workout then it's just over with you ain't building no muscle you ain't retaining no muscle you're just melting your muscle away basically and that's a bunch of fucking bullshit man <laughs> the real shit is this the 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 process of your body converting protein into new muscle or retaining muscle is called muscle protein synthesis y'all can go google this shit. i'm not making this up muscle protein synthesis that process lasts anywhere from 24 to 48 maybe even 72 hours for some people which means that as long as you get your protein in within 24 48 hours you've given your body the optimal time that it needs to actually take those nutrients and repair from that workout so that whole anabolic window shit, i mean it's cool right it has some credence in it if you a bodybuilder and you got to step on stage and you need every single advantage you can get yeah you need to focus on the anabolic window but people like me <laughs> like regular guys who just want to look ripped who want to look good with their shirt off who not trying to step on a bodybuilding stage that anabolic window shit ain't a big deal man it's not a big deal that was helpful guys drop a flame emoji in them comments y'all know the vibes amanda tate amanda please says corey best food tracker you would recommend my fitness pal my fitness pal is the one that i've been using for the past eight years <laughs> it's free you can find it uh you can find pretty much any restaurant you know mo for the most part in there and it's just easy to use man you don't have to think you just scan the foods or whatever and it just pops up my fitness pal 
Uh, Matt Cunningham, is there a way to do a 21 day fast without significant muscle loss? Keep it to a minimum. I'm already used to intermittent fasting up to 72 hours. So I do one. I want a 21 day fast, bro. I ain't never done a 21 day fast, but I'm gonna be real with you, man. Like once you get out over that 72 hour period, that's when your body starts to actually break down muscle. Right. So I don't know that there's a way to legitimately hold on to all muscle because it does get to a point where once you're beyond like 72 hours with no food, your body does start to break down muscle. I think that the one thing that you may be able to do is strength train, you know, because strength training does send a signal to your body that muscle is a priority. Right. So if you think about it like this, if, if any of you guys who've ever had an injury, y'all can relate to what I'm about to say. If you don't use it, you lose it, right? So let's say you got like a, a broken arm or something like that, and and your arm is wrapped up in the cast, right? If any of you guys have ever had this experience, what happens when you take the cast off? Your muscle has atrophied in that area significantly, right? It's shriveled up in comparison to the other side, and that's because you wasn't using those muscles for an extended amount of time, and your body started to what pare it down, break it down. So it's the same with like if you just did a fast, if you just did a fast for like 21 days, if you're not using your muscles right on the regular basis. It's going to be more likely that you lose those muscles. So I think if you can do a light strength training workout, you know, during your 21 day fast, if you're committed to doing that shit, I think that might be the best thing that you can do. Uh, yo, daddy, I have a problem saying that. <laughs> calling another man man but that's his that's a screen name guys i wasn't i wasn't saying that to him you know what I'm saying? that's wild to say that to another man um how often do you intermittent fasting uh i've been doing intermittent fasting pretty much daily for the most part for the past was it 2024 since 2016 so like eight years right um i have phases when i i don't fast as long right like some days i'm doing uh you know, 16, eight, you know, when I'm like looking to bulk, build some muscle for a few weeks, you know, maybe those days I'm only fasting 12 hours, but that's still more than most of y'all. Right. <laughs> you know, but um, for the most part, I've been doing it eight years. And, and it, you know, I have periods of time in my life where I do more to actually like fast for longer periods of time to get more of those detoxification and fat loss benefits, man, to be honest. So like, um, Two weeks ago, I did like a 48 hour fast. Um, I've done 72, you know, every week I do a 24 every single week. Sometimes I do multiple 24 hour fasts in a week. So, you know, I, I'm always doing that. I'm 263. I'm trying to get to, you trying, bro. You trying to get to 200. That's your problem, bro. You, is you trying or doing, <laughs> you know, because that's going to determine, man, your mindset about how you attack this goal is way more significant than any strategy that you take. Right. Because where the mind goes, the body will follow. So if you out here with any like semblance of doubt in your mind that you trying to do some shit, guess what? That's actually putting out into the environment, to the atmosphere, right, to the universe for all you hippie motherfuckers that failure is a possibility right but i ask you man like how would you behave if like failure was like not an option right if you had to do it what would be the level of effort that you would put in right right that's what you need to be focusing on like how do i put in so much work that failure is impossible uh sharky says why do you have boobs because man I be training hard, baby. <laughs> you know the vibes. Uh, does creatine help with weight loss or is it keeping me big as hell? Creatine is great for muscle growth and fat loss because creatine actually helps with muscle growth, muscle repair, and also just athletic performance. And so when you think about how that translates to fat loss, if you have more muscle, your body burns more calories at rest, right? You have a faster metabolism. So it's easier to lose fat and easier to keep it off. If you need more help with how to get that shit together, right? I gave you guys a free guide tonight. It's called the Big Belly Blaster. It goes in detail of what you actually would need to do to lose some belly fat, right? Lose that big ass belly <laughs> and also uh, build some muscle. I dropped it in the comments 
and it's also in the description of the video go check it out by the way are you natural yeah man these is natural titties baby these is mine i built these titties all right kenneth that's what i'm talking about no more try Fuck try man that's what everybody else is doing man and guess what they've been trying for ever <laughs> you know what i'm saying every everything that they've ever done to this point that's been a failure has been a try so what's going to be the difference you know what i mean if you say i'm gonna do that's a commitment right that's a commitment i'm gonna i'm gonna do whatever it takes to win uh hey what's the best whey protein to buy under 35 dollars uh i don't know man i don't buy protein under 35 <laughs> I mean, back when I I did like be out here, you know, uh, buying cheap protein. I mean, I, I was I was fucking with the six star, but at that time it wasn't about getting the best quality. It was about saving money. So if you're in a spot where you got to save money, you just gotta you gotta roll with the punches, man. You gotta get whatever you can get. You know, um, how do you feel about drinking collagen supplement? Uh, I feel like that's some girl shit, man so <laughs> collagen is is good for hair skin and nails you know i don't i don't know a single man that's ever said man by golly i can't wait to get this supplement that's going to help me with my hair skin and nails right like never heard a man say that right so collagen is exclusively for women um so tina i think it'd be great for you for all the guys here i don't know why the fuck you would even want to do that uh <laughs> what do you eat uh sport gd says what do you eat food <laughs> motherfucker <laughs> uh jose lopez um do you make protein shakes with almond milk i feel like it's extra work you know i tell my clients too because my you know my clients ain't as, as tough as me all the time right they'd be like eh, i need some flavor right and so i'd be like yo just you know do some almond milk um but me i usually just do water you know what i'm saying just, just mix it with water <laughs> it's just, it's, again it's functional for flavor man i just want to get to my to my protein goals man but it's not to say almond milk is is anything bad on it like i recommend it because it's, le it's less calories than whole milk right so you you'd be able to eat more of your calories which would be more conducive to long-term success how do you grow taller um patience <laughs> thank you for the shopping tips no problem how do you how do i raise my estrogen for gains man i get fat <laughs> the fatter you get the more estrogen you're gonna have so just you big as hell just keep getting big <laughs> is it 200 grams of protein a day keeping me big as hell i don't know you i don't know you gotta tell me more about your total calories protein is just one part of it uh who's adolf hitler fitness i don't know <laughs> what do you think is the most aesthetic muscle group Corey? i believe that the most aesthetically pleasing muscle group for guys for men especially is going to be like um i i've changed on this over the years if you asked me this like when i first started working out i would have said chest right but i i actually think it's like it's like a good set of like shoulders because your shoulders make you look wider and if you like in a tank top or if you're in like a um even if, if you have like a, a fitted shirt on like you just you just look like a broader person you know it, it sort of gives you a width to you that most people don't have so you just look more aesthetically pleasing plus if you have wide shoulders it makes your waist look smaller no matter what your waist looks like so same same with your your back too all right my man's anonymous i'm anonymously chill hit it on the hit it on the head uh pause what's your favorite workout book my favorite workout book is bigger leaner stronger by mike matthews it's a solid read for any of you guys who want to really learn the ins and outs of fitness uh what's your thoughts on martial arts i think it's great man to be able to defend yourself and be able to discipline your mind in a way that you could be able to knock somebody out if you needed to right i think that's great i think every man should know how to do that hey me again what do you think about a routine with a thousand uh, squats and uh in a day you're doing a thousand squats and 200 2500 sit-ups in a day why <laughs> what are you looking to prove <laughs> 
uh, Charles Bacon got the program. He got the Big Belly Blaster. Hey, hey, I hope you enjoy that, man. Hope it helps you a ton. Um, just started following. Glad I found you. Helpful tips, great info. Appreciate you, Brian G. Uh, how much protein would you get from eating two steaks and a scrambled egg and black beans? Um, my fitness pal to tell you that, man. I don't know. I don't know how many ounces of steak you're talking about. You know how much? How many ounces of black beans? You gotta give me serving sizes, bro. I, I don't know. I'm not like a. I'm not in your brain, right? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. What do you think of the RX bar? I think it's the worst protein bar I've ever tasted in my life. I'm not even sure how or why it's available for human consumption, but somehow, you know, people have, uh, you know, kept it on the shelves. You know, um, somebody's eating them because I see them everywhere. Right. But that person is not me. You know, <laughs> I know I just said all that shit about flavor a minute ago, but, you know, when it comes to eating protein bars and there's like an abundance of different options, I would rather go with something that is edible, that's palatable than, than something that tastes like garbage, which is what the RX bar is. <laughs> How do you stay ripped on the go? Hey, I've made tons of videos on that, Brandon Lee. Mm. Um, and creating drops, creatine drops. Um, I don't know what a creatine drop is, but it sounds convenient. Can caffeine supplements or pills help you suppress your appetite and keep you fuller in deficit? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, caffeine in general will suppress your appetite. So if you're taking it in pill form, you're just getting it that much faster. Yeah, RS, RX bars are trash. Thoughts on mass gainers? I think it's probably one of the worst decisions you can make, right? If you want to be on the toilet all day long, <laughs> you know, saying shitty boo boo, right? Go ahead, get you a. Uh, Get you a mass scanner, man. You know what I'm saying? Get you a mass scanner so you can tear your bathroom up, right? Um, but if you just want to like build some muscle and you want to get quick calories in, man, it's other ways to just drink your calories, like make a smoothie that has a lot of fruits and an actual nutritional value and, and not a bunch of chemicals and trash and sugar, right? Um, I think that's my take on mass scanners, man. Joshua says, Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you, Joshua H. How much can you bench? Parker says more than you. <laughs> I'm messing with you, man. I think um, I think I, last time I did my bench max, what was it? I think it was like 275 or something like that. Um, but I don't I don't go to max very often. Um, what's your favorite song on Monotic Boo by Baby King? I've never listened to a Baby King album. And that's not because I have something against Baby King. It's just there's nothing special about him to me, right? Like he's just Kendrick Lamar's cousin, right? I don't, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I don't know anything else about him other than that. Like that's how he was introduced to me. You know, do I want to listen to Kendrick Lamar or his cousin, right? <laughs> it's like, it's like Solange, right? This is probably, you know, for the ladies here, they probably can feel this. Do you want to listen to Beyonce or Beyonce's little sister? Right. Like, you know, <laughs> it's like it's like it, it's something about that, man. When you find out people, somebody's related to somebody else who's famous and you already like that artist. It's like, why would I want to listen to their relatives music? Because, you know, they're probably similar to this person. That's just my mental association with Baby King. I'm not saying that that's the truth. I just have never heard anything from Baby King that I'm like, oh, shit, I need to go listen to his album. Like, nah. <laughs> uh are there any vegetarian protein options that are not protein powder or uh protein bars for reference i'm 14 overweight and my parents won't let me do protein bars and powders yeah just get you um with all the vegans be getting get you some tempeh seitan or um tempeh seitan or tofu just get that stuff and they got a bunch of mock meats, bro. That's made out of like black beans and a bunch of other things, too. So Plant-based protein is everywhere now. Corey, do you have any cheeseburger and fry hacks that won't make you big as hell? Yeah, don't eat that shit. <laughs> Stop eating fucking fries and, 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 and burgers and you won't be big as hell. That's my hack. You know what I'm saying? Or, or what you could do, man, is just... I don't know a good way to like fit fries in your macros because fries is just a bunch of like 
fats and carbs. It just kind of fucks the calories up. But you can do burgers pretty easily. You know what I'm saying? You can do burgers really easily into your macros. If you get like a nice eight ounce of like some lean beef or some lean, you know, turkey, ground turkey, or even some lean bison, right? You do that, you get you some like high, um, high fiber bread, like some bread, like some Dave's killer bread, or some of these breads out here, like the if you fuck with the keto bread, you know, that's like low, low carb, high fiber. You can get something like that. And I, you know what I do a lot when I'm want to eat burgers is I just get two burgers. Why the fuck am I going to waste my macros on fries when I can get two burgers, hit my protein and be more satisfied than I would have been if I had them fucking French fries. That's what I do when I go to restaurants, y'all. I hope y'all know that. Like I just get two entrees of the main course and I don't get the sides because the sides is what's keeping you big as hell. What's the best veggies and fruits to incorporate in fat loss? My top three would be berries number one because berries are low calorie high fiber high in water so it keeps you satiated full and the calories low number two would be avocados avocados have a lot of healthy fats in them that's actually going to help with more hormone production things like testosterone and whatnot as well as you know you're going to get that fiber that's going to keep you satiated full in the deficit as well and I think the last one that I would have to say is a good one is like probably apples. Apples for the same reason as the berries. It's like pretty high in water and it's also got some good uh, fiber in it, too. Uh, maybe another one that I could add to the list would be like oranges. Pretty good, too. High in vitamin C, pretty low calorie, um, not as much fiber as the, the apples. That's why I put the apples over it. Watermelons are a good one, too. But you got to be careful with watermelons because it's it's pretty high in comparison to the other ones that I've named in like the actual carb intake amount. So it kind of can add up quick. But those would be my picks on fruits, veggies. I mean, anything green, you know, everything from asparagus to Brussels sprouts to spinach. That's what I call spinach, y'all. Broccoli, broccoli or uh, any of the other greens, man. Those would be my top picks. Top three songs on the off season by J. Cole. Okay. So number one is uh is a uh, nine five south. Uh number two would be hmm. It's probably gonna be my life. The 21 Savage feature does it for me. <laughs> and uh the third one is gonna be oh, let me look at the track list real quick. It's probably Hunger on Hillside. Yeah, it's Hunger on Hillside. I figured if I eat bad food in moderation, you will still track it. You got foods you like sometimes. I mean, I think you just have the wrong impression of like how dieting should be. If you if you approaching your diet from the standpoint of, man, I'm going to eat bad food sometimes in moderation, you setting yourself up for failure. Because think about what that does to you psychologically. Like, you're literally like getting yourself excited about not doing the thing that's going to get you the best results. So you're getting the most joy out of the shit that's actually keeping you big as hell, right? Instead, if you flip that and you start getting excited about making your favorite foods actually hit your calories and macros, then at that point, it becomes a game. It's like, oh shit, if I can hit my numbers and still enjoy what I'm eating, I get the best of both worlds, right? <laughs> it's kind of like dating like if you got somebody that you like sexually attracted to and you can have good conversation it's like yo what else can i possibly want <laughs> right some of you guys are like is that possible yes it is <laughs> it is possible man you gotta you gotta work on yourself <laughs> you gotta work on yourself to attract the type of woman uh yes i found that if i have something sweet once it leads to a binge heather know what the fuck i'm talking about man and wouldn't it be so much better, Heather and everybody else who like find themselves binging, sort of gaining weight and then losing it and gaining it again? Wouldn't it be so much better if you can just have things that you enjoy and still lose weight? Right. Wouldn't it wouldn't it be so much easier on you and so much less pressure if you knew exactly what you needed to do to lose the weight and keep it off and actually like feel good about day to day. Hey, I'm actually hitting these, these nutrients. I'm actually eating these foods. I enjoy to eat. Like, wouldn't that be better? Type one, if that'd be better guys. 
Uh, who is P. Shelley? Yo, I don't know who the fuck P. Shelley is, man. <laughs> I don't know who that is, man. My man's keep typing in the chat like who, thoughts on P. Shelley. I don't know who that is, man. <laughs> I know nothing about him. You know, does breathing and not <laughs> does breathing in moderation help me reach my daily caloric <laughs> deficit goals? <laughs> I, I think breathing in moderation is not good for anybody. Because <laughs> moderation means what? That means you do it sometimes, right? If you breathe sometimes, you're probably not going to live very long. <laughs> What's your favorite sport? Um, my favorite sport is basketball. <laughs> Oh, they're talking about P. That's who P. Shelley is. P. Diddy. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't know, man. <laughs> I, I don't. My thoughts on P. Diddy is nothing. I don't think about P. Diddy, man. He's got some songs that I like. <laughs> that's, that's about it. There's like one song of his on my uh, my morning uh, money and mindset playlist. Favorite player, LeBron? Nope. Nope. My favorite player was Dwayne Wade, but he's retired now. So I, I would say by default, my favorite player right now is Steph Curry. Um, <laughs> do you listen to Illmatic? Illmatic is a classic. I've listened to it a few times, but it's not, you know, there's there's song, there's a there's albums that were really, really like good at the time that they were released. But then when you look at the people who the album influenced and then you start to immerse yourselves in their music, you start to see the sort of inspirations that they gather from that album. So the album doesn't it doesn't sound the same as I'm sure it sounded when it first came out. Right. So when I listen to Illmatic now, you know, as an adult, like after it's been out like 20 plus years, man, like I just look at the artists that I like that were inspired by Nas and then I'm like. Yeah, I like this guy better. <laughs> like I like I like the I like the guy, you know, the the inspiration better than the source personally. But that's just preference. It's not to say that like Nas isn't one of the greatest to ever do it though. Um are you a fan of Getty Sap? I don't know who that is. Is it true that weight training before cardio will give you better results, more fat burn? Jennifer, I would say yes. Easily that is one of the things that I have found in you know, my personal journey and coaching like hundreds of people to these years is always best because you got to think when you are training, you are sending a signal to your body to adapt a certain way. And so adaptation is the whole goal. It's only to say, hey, body, change this way. And so when you prioritize a certain subset of training, whether it be strength training or cardio, you are optimizing your energy towards what adaptation you want that entire workout to really be geared towards right so when you have top energy is what beginning of the workout so if you put all that towards cardio guess what you've optimized your body for endurance because you put most of your energy into the cardio first on the flip side if you put it into strength training first you've optimized your body for aesthetics right i want more muscle in which case is going to lead to more fat loss long term because i'm going to do what I'm going to build a faster metabolism and that's going to keep that fat off me, right? So yes, strength training before you do your cardio, guys. If you want to get ripped. If you want to run a 5K, this is a different conversation. <laughs> George Floyd Fitness is wild. Um, Tiger says, hey, Corey, what do you recommend for a person that eats a lot but barely gains weight? I would recommend that person actually track how much food they eat because eat a lot is not a fucking metric, right? How, how much is a lot, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, 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 think about that. Like a lot can be a lot to a lot of different people, right? Like I could say I eat a lot and I could be talking about 5,000 calories. You could say you eat a lot and that could be what I eat every fucking day to maintain my weight, which is 2,000, right? Sometimes I talk to people, right? Like, for example, my girlfriend. Right. She's like, uh, what is she like? Five, six. Right. She's she's about like a hundred and like 20 something pounds. Right. She barely eats. <laughs> right. She maybe eats like twice a day. Right. 
but she sees me and, and says, oh, man, you eat a lot. But sometimes those days I'd be in the deficit. Right. So like in our regular day for her might be like somewhere between twelve hundred and fifteen hundred calories. Right. That's like fifteen hundred is like a lot for her. Whereas me. Right. I'm in a deficit. I feel like I'm dying. <laughs> right. Like a lot for me would be like three thousand. So you need numbers really to understand like how much you're consuming and how that relates to your muscle growth. Kettlebell program or gym weights? Ryan, it depends on your goal. Kettlebells are really good for functional training, right? Um, you know, there's some aesthetic benefits to that, but like being in the gym, like there's there's a lot more movements that I am familiar with. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not like the big kettlebell guy, <laughs> right? I didn't get the kettlebell certification yet. You know, I might get it, but um yeah, the, the the weights in the gym, man, just like from a bodybuilding perspective or a body sculpting perspective, there's just a lot more exercises that I'm privy to that you can do with just a set of dumbbells and keep it simple. Most people can do dumbbells, no problem. But I think you have to have a certain uh, certain subset of mobility to actually be able to do um, kettlebells well. Is me being a black man with a sexy beard, hogwarts glasses, crooked teeth, and a green tank top that's streaming at the same time keeping me big as hell? Probably. <laughs> Probably, man. I'm glad you made it to the chat, bro. Uh, Corey thinks he's Tupac. I mean, if I, I would need a, a bandana to be Tupac. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I would, I would need the bandana to be Tupac. You know what I'm saying? These people need to be in a psychiatric hospital. <laughs> nah, man, they need to be where they at, man. I'm glad they came through, man. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, some of these motherfuckers ain't got nothing better to do, man. I, I'd rather they be talking to me, you know what I mean? Helping them not be fucking losers and big as hell than, you know, be out here, you know, just ruining their lives. <laughs> <laughs> I am bald and black. Uh, hey, congratulations, Glock Z. You, <laughs> you discovered something that nobody else on the chat knew today. I'm bald and black. <laughs> Good job, man. <laughs> How do you manage to stay lean while eating at Fogo? Like Fogo the Child? Right? Fogo the Child? Is that what you're talking about? Because I was at Fogo the Child two, for a few weeks ago. I just got a bunch of protein. <laughs> so it was pretty easy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Is it true that cardio ruins gains? Not necessarily. It just depends on how much you do in relation to the amount of calories that you're taking in. You know, uh, <laughs> I guess I'm the fitness Tupac. <laughs> Thanks for the good vibes around nutrition and weight loss. No problem, Carlos. <laughs> Looking like Tupac, keeping you big. <laughs> hey, coach, do you think dropping body fat percentage when you're skinny is normal or important? Does it make bulking easier? I'll say this. The leaner you are, the, the better your bulk is going to go. Because you're you're if you're coming out of like a cut, I don't know if you meant that or you're just naturally skinny. But like when you the biggest fear that most guys have when it comes to bulking is getting fat. Right. Like putting on a bunch of like body fat as opposed to like muscle mass. So if you're coming out of like a really lean state, like. You have a tremendous amount of upside for muscle growth and minimal fat gain just as long as your macros are proper the other side of that though is like if you're just like really skinny you have to really focus on like your calories because the biggest reason why you're skinny is because you probably live most of your life in a deficit so it's going to be like really getting good at hitting your calories and staying in a surplus uh <laughs> Streaming almost an hour. <laughs> hey man, I do this shit, man. I do this, man. Hi, sir. Love your stuff. I was really interested in the biggest sale catchphrase. Marketing brilliance. God bless. Yo, I didn't even know that that was a marketing thing, man. That's just how I talk. What's the best protein bar? And what's the best tasting protein bar? Uh the best tasting protein bar is by far the outright bar. You know, <laughs> the, the outright bar is the most delicious, you know, and um, 
doesn't have the best macros. I would say that, you know, better macros could come from like a quest bar because the, the protein to carb ratio compared to fats and or like a um a barbells bar, you know, that those those are solid picks. But the best tasting is outright. There's no I haven't had a, a I haven't had anything that come close to Anabar. Nope. Um have I had the grenade yet? I think I said I was gonna do the grenade, but I haven't. But people have been talking about that. But I haven't tasted a protein bar that tastes better than an outright bar. It's imagine like peanut butter that has protein in it that is like other things in it, like depending on the flavor, right? Like I had like my favorite one is called white chocolate cranberry. Yo, it's peanut butter with white chocolate cranberries in it, and it also has protein, right? It's it's fucking amazing. Legacy the legacy pastries are horrible. <clears throat> Kenya, you are capping, you are full of cap. That is not true. <laughs> I don't know which one you've had, but the legacy food Cinnabon is probably the greatest thing I've ever had that was a protein item. Uh, what is the cheapest way to get protein? <laughs> Why are you looking for the cheap way, bro? <laughs> Do you not value yourself, bro? Do you not care about your body? <laughs> right? <laughs> I tell you since you ask, you know what I'm saying? Um, but uh, basically, basically, <clears throat> tuna, man, like get you some prepackaged meats, paws, like tuna, like maybe like the chicken creations from like Star Kiss, or um, you just do, you just do what most people do, man. Just get some like like a a, a large amount of chicken breast, man, and just grill that shit. <sighs> what does protein under a microscope look like? You gotta ask a fucking scientist, man. <laughs> what Greek yogurt brands do you like? Uh, I like Oikos. I think Oikos is probably tastes the best. Um, ratio is pretty decent. Um, what's that other one that I like? Uh, it's not memorable, so maybe we just go with Oikos. Oikos is kind of the king right now. Combination of macros and flavor. Hey man, bass the guitar goat says, by the way, bro, you the goat. You are ruling YouTube fitness comments. I appreciate that. I'm I'm glad to hear that, man. <laughs> uh I miss the info for skinny dudes. Can I rewind this live for later? Yes, yes. I always save the lives. Rotisserie chickens are cheap from Costco. Best deal of protein overall. Yeah, Kenya, that's true. But you gotta watch out for the fat. You gotta watch out for that skin. Uh, what's your opinion of prepackaged cooked chicken breasts from Costco and Sam's Club? Uh, I don't know. I haven't had them. Um, <clears throat> what can I put in Greek yogurt? You can put some berries in there. Uh, you can put some whey protein in there for extra protein. Uh, you can put some nuts in there, pause, right, for some healthy fats and give it that crunch. All those things would be, be fine. Do you want to be big as hell or built as hell? I think you guys know the answer to that question. <laughs> what are the macros in dogs are dogs high in protein man this guy george floyd is wild and he is unhinged tonight <laughs> oh man well guys if you want more tips on like how to get ripped in record time man and uh really lose the weight keep it off man go get that big belly blaster I'm dropping it again in the comments for y'all. Uh, feel free to check that out. Also, if you're on Facebook, go check it out in the description of the video. Just hit the link. It's completely free. Go get that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Edward said, thanks. No problem, Edward. Uh, just wanted to stop in and say, I appreciate what you do, brother. I'm down 16 pounds. Congratulations, man. Uh, Jamie says, is there a certain amount of fiber that you should have a day? If you don't get enough, how do you feel about supplements? I think fiber supplements are trash. They're probably some of the worst things that you can spend your money on because the only ones I've ever seen are like Benefiber or like what's the other one that everybody be having? I don't know, but I know they're trash because like the servings will give you like two or three grams of fiber. When you could get way more if you just ate some real food fiber i would say get it in an abundance of like 25 to maybe 30 grams of fiber every day and if you're just doing it through supplements man not only is it going to be a very very um productive eating at the toilet let's just say that but also 
you know, it's going to take a lot of servings just to hit your fiber goals, man. It's crazy. Uh, Krishna is talking about a fupa. Metamucil. That's what I was thinking about. Metamucil is fucking trash. You get like two grams of serving. You, you have to take like 15 servings just to hit 30 grams. That's ridiculous. My main motivation to lose weight is so I don't have a heart attack when I'm 35 or diabetes. Yeah, Raymond, don't get diabetes, bro. <laughs> it's, it's, it's wreaking havoc, havoc across America, man. Don't do it. Uh, how can I lose 50 pounds in one week? It's a prayer. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man, you need, uh, man, if you was on my last live, you know what you need, man. You need to go on a quest to collect the Dragon Balls, man. <laughs> Make a wish <laughs> to Shinron. <laughs> he'll get that weight off you tonight <laughs> do you ever do colonics no uh do you ever eat candy um depends on what you consider candy you know since some of the some of the protein bars that i i have i would say is like on that level man like outright bar feels like i'm eating candy what cereal do you prefer i'm not a cereal guy personally but some good cereals to have these are the ones i recommend to my clients are uh you know, Magic Spoon is a good one. Uh, what's that one that everybody's been eating lately? Catalina Crunch. Catalina Crunch is another good one. I'm telling you these ones because the macros are great. High protein. Uh, you know, the Catalina Crunch has some fiber, some healthy fats in it. Um, there's also that uh, that Premier Protein one where, where you know, it has some protein in it as well. The, the ingredients isn't as good or as clean as like the Catalina Crunch or the Magic Spoon, but the macros are better than a lot of the bullshit that y'all would eat for cereal. Another good one that I would put on the list is Kashi, Go Lean, but Kashi is like heavier in carbs than these other picks, so you gotta be careful with your servings. But those are my picks for cereal. I lost 50 pounds slowly is the best. Took me nine months. Consistency is key. Stick with it. Congratulations, Mary. You better preach that gospel. Right. I lost 50 pounds of five months, guys, because I wasn't bullshitting. And guess what? I ain't never got that fat again. So it says something when you learn the process and you take your time with it. You know, what's your thoughts on Premier Protein pancakes? I didn't know Premier Protein had pancakes. Um, might be good. <laughs> right. I have to see the macros, man. But I ain't, I ain't know they had pancakes. Yeah, man, this guy is wildin'. George Floyd. Wow. I'm big as hell. I walk up the stairs. I'd be mad tired and I got to stop smoking weed. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Or you can keep smoking weed and just stay big as hell until it gets out of control. You know, it's up to you, man. You can choose to change your life or you can choose to continue to like stay in the circumstances that you in. Everybody has that choice every day. That's why I put out what I put out, man, because, you know, I made a choice for myself that I didn't want to be fat as hell no more. And, um, you know, it worked out really well for me. And I believe some of you guys may want to make that same choice. You just may not have the right information. So I'm, I'm giving it out. Uh, I lost 80 pounds. I just stopped eating so much. Yeah, Raymond. <laughs> That's what it comes down to, man. Don't be out here eating all that crazy food, man. <laughs> should, uh, should you eat grass-fed hamburgers on a lean bulk? I think that's a good pick, you know, because grass fed typically is a little leaner, you know. Um, I don't know. I haven't had a lot of fatty grass fed cuts of meat, pause, um, but it might be out there. You really just got to make sure that you hit your macros, man. That's really more important than whether it's grass fed or not. <laughs> Have you banned anyone for being too out of pocket? No, nah, man, because I don't give a fuck what people be saying, man. <laughs> they can say whatever they want, man. <laughs> I don't give a fuck, man. I've heard worse. I'm from Detroit, man. Um, thoughts on Zoa pre-workout. I didn't know Zoa had a pre-workout. I've never had it, bro. Uh, thoughts on OMAD. I think OMAD is cool for people who like want to lose fat very quickly. I do it sometimes. Right. But it's like. It's really ends up being a thing where I've done like a 24 hour fast and I only have one meal to break it that 24 hours. And then a few hours later, I end up going to sleep. So I'm not doing it for old mad purposes. I'm doing it because I want to do 
a 24 hour fast to just detoxify my body, you know, cleanse myself. Most people, when they talk about OMAD, for those that don't know what the fuck OMAD is, right? You you new to this whole shit. You like, why is he talking in fucking symb like symbols and 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 letters? No, OMAD stands for it's an acronym, one meal a day. And basically, it's a it's an intermittent fasting protocol where you only eat once a day. <laughs> right and then essentially you know it's really really good for putting you in the deficit so that you lose fat um the issue comes in when it comes to the muscle retention or muscle building side of things because typically you're not able to get enough protein in to substantiate keeping your muscle mass right so maybe it could work you know what i'm saying for retaining muscle if you can get enough protein in but usually most guys can't patricia says hey what up patricia what's good girl um then usually some chicken for okay i don't know what you say dude please help me i want to jump higher do you have any tips yeah you gotta you gotta strengthen your lower body man you gotta strengthen up them calves you gotta strengthen up them hammies them glutes really your whole posterior chain from like uh your, your low back on down and you gotta work on plyometrics man you gotta train the the muscles that actually are incorporated in jumping I'm not the guy for that because I can't jump that high. <laughs> but there you can find a lot of like plyometric workouts online. Is drinking just water enough while I'm working out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, maybe add some electrolytes to it, but yeah, water's fine. Do you recommend eating pure, uncured uranium? I don't, I don't, I, don't, I never had uranium before, so I don't know. <laughs> How do you maintain? How do you maintain my weight after my weight loss? You just do what you did to lose the weight consistently. That's why I don't understand why motherfuckers be going on diets where they feel like they got to deprive themselves of the things they enjoy. Right. Because at the end of the day, like once you go back to the shit you enjoy, you're just going to get fat again. So you maintain the weight loss by actually enjoying what you do and knowing what you did. Guess what, guys? If you track your calories and macros, <gasps> You know what you did to lose the weight and keep it off. If you want to learn more about that, go get my free course, The Big Belly Blaster. Teaches you the ins and outs of that so that you can lose some fat and don't get fat as hell again. Right? It's in the it's in the bio, it's in the link of the uh the description of this video, and it's also in the motherfucking comments if you are on YouTube. Am diabetic is internet fasting good. Uh, I think I think Teresa's talking about intermittent fasting. Yes, intermittent fasting is fantastic for somebody who's diabetic in the sense that it helps you to lower the overall glucose that's in your bloodstream so that you're less likely to actually have an insulin response. But I mean, the biggest thing that you need to do is have somebody be able to monitor your blood sugar levels so that you don't go into um you know that 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 diabetic coma right so you may need to um you may need to, to consult a doctor first but i think i think you could do it safely just as long as you hydrate well i got a lot of clients who are diabetic who uh they just hydrate like crazy and they're able to fast no problem uh ooh, what can help you lower your set point i don't know what the fuck that is uh what's the best way to prevent sagging skin especially when you're going through menopause the best way to prevent saggy skin is to take good care of your skin make sure you clean and moisturize your motherfucking skin while subsequently building strength so that you can actually maintain or if you're lucky build some muscle so that once you actually shrink down you lose that fat you have the muscle to actually take the shape of the skin that was stretched out it'll get some of its elasticity back though as long as you're moisturizing it but if y'all out here with that loose skin man a lot of y'all don't put on lotion <laughs> i know because i coach some of y'all that don't do it you know y'all know who i'm talking to how can i lose stubborn belly fat uh zico you can go get the big belly blaster <laughs> where i give you all my secrets for free on how to lose fat you know uh get sculpted right sculpt your body and uh maintain it long term that's in the chat if you want to get that for free or you can go to the description of this video uh but it breaks everything down really the key is like you got to be in a calorie deficit that's what i talk about in the big belly blaster how you get in a deficit right and stay in a deficit baby 
<laughs> and then once you be able to get lean, you know, how you come out of that deficit better. Go get that big belly blaster. Get the big belly blaster. Got you, Zico. Okay. <laughs> George Floyd is getting really excited, man. <laughs> uh, Corey, does drinking all the water before bed keep you up all night since that more of the bathroom trips? I don't be up that late um, going to the bathroom because... I think I, I think I just have good a good bladder control. Like I got some strong Kegel muscles, so basically uh, I can just go to sleep. And then yeah, I do wake up in the middle of the night use the bathroom, but I, I don't stay up all night. <laughs> right? I just wake up when I gotta go to the bathroom. I take a piss and then I go right back to sleep. So when people say that, like I don't, I don't, I I personally cannot relate because yo, I go right back to sleep. You know, but I, I I wake up and piss every night. Person, calculate protein needs according to current body weight and target weight. Yeah, Shawnee, you 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 on point with that. You need to do that. <laughs> that's going that's going to help you tremendously. Uh, Corey, do you like coconut oil? <laughs> Pause. It makes me very warm. It helps me burn fat. Pause, man. I, I, I don't even know if I can answer that question. <laughs> oh man, the boys, the boys squad says he's a big fan, man. Appreciate the support. Uh, Chalia says how to break a plateau. A plateau does not exist. A plateau is some shit that people make up in their minds to justify that they don't know what to do next, right? Really, when it comes down to is that you lose fat, right? because you did something to do it, right? You, you created a calorie deficit, either with activity or nutrition or both, right? And what you did worked, right? You lost the weight and then now you're at the point that those type of strategies could take you to. So now to get past this to the next point, you have to just change your approach. Your body adapted the way you told it to, now you have to get it to adapt again. So, you just have to know what it is that you did that got you here, whether it be understanding your caloric intake, understanding your training protocol that worked really well. And then at that point, you just make an adjustment. That's why I always say if you ain't tracking, you slacking because how the fuck you going to know what to do once your body has adapted to the point that you told it to get to? Are you going to know what to change next if you want to lose more weight or are you just guess? Right now, if you need help understanding how to track. Come on, man. Go ahead. Get that big belly blaster. It's completely free. I'm going to drop it in the chat again. And it's also in the description of the video. It'll teach you how to track your foods. But that's that's what you need. You know, you just need to know you need to know what you was doing. Right. If you for example, if you was taking 10,000 steps a day to get to this point and you had a certain number of calories and you don't want to drop your calories more. Right. Maybe you just do 15,000 steps a day or 20,000 steps a day or 30,000 steps a day whatever it takes right it just use 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 your tracking to determine what you're going to do next do you recommend a specific macro calculator i just use my fitness pal you know what i'm saying it's my fitness pal <laughs> i just keep it simple man like i've been using that shit for eight years for free uh I've, i haven't really i'm gonna be honest guys ask me all the time i haven't really looked at other options i don't even know if my fitness pal is the best it's just the best to me because I've been using it the most, <laughs> but I haven't used anything else because I haven't had a need to. Right. Uh, isn't it bad to lose too much weight? Please answer this. What do you mean too much weight? Because weight is a very arbitrary sort of number. Like it's an arbitrary statement. Like, Weight is comprised of like muscle, fat, water, right? Your hair, right? All of that is weight. So what are you actually losing? If you lost muscle, then yeah, that's a that's an issue. <laughs> but if you did only lost fat and you didn't lose muscle, then it's fine. <laughs> that's funny. Uh not checking out the big belly blaster keeping you big as hell. It might, it might keep you big as hell. 
Tina says fat fat secret is good tracker. Might be. I don't I ain't never tested, but y'all more than welcome to. Y'all can do whatever the hell y'all want to do. <laughs> Doing live on YouTube, keeping you big and set? Probably. <laughs> Probably is, right? I'm only gonna be live for a, a few more minutes, guys. Uh, how many subs till you oil up? I mean, I technically oil up every day, you know, because I ain't like you bigger than big as hell. I moisturize my skin after I wash my body, right? Um, but I mean, I don't I don't know what you're talking about other than that, man. I use the baby oil every day, man. Make sure I, you know, moisturize my skin. I'm black, so I can't be out here ashy. Maya Kemp says, what exactly is a calorie deficit? Who wants me to break down what a calorie deficit is? Type one in the comments. I don't I don't know if anybody wants to hear that or not. Right? I do it for you, Maya, if everybody else wants to hear it too. But if nobody wants to hear it, then I'm not gonna do it. Cause I think most people know what it is, but maybe I don't know. Okay, I got I got oh, some ones is coming in. Oh shit. Okay. So y'all do want to know what a calorie deficit is. I'm gonna make it as simple as possible. What is calories? Right? Well, calories is the measure of energy from foods. Right. So it's literally the amount of energy you would get from an item. Right. So let's say, you know, this water here, this has zero calories. So there's zero energy that I'm going to be putting it, you know, in my in my body to actually be able to do activities. If I drank water and I didn't do any other food with it, then I would be running off the energy I already have on my body, which is either food I had before that's still like being processed or digested or worked through. Or is body fat, right? If y'all still with me, type two in the comments. I just want to make sure. I just told y'all what a calorie is. It's just the measure of energy. I'm not going to move on since I seen some twos in the motherfucking comments. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because that, okay, there we go. There we go. So now we know what calories are. It's energy. So all food is assigned to a certain subset of energy, right? So, for example, like a banana is 100 calories. So it's like 100 units of energy. Uh, like a, a sandwich, depending on what you put in, it could be more than that. It could be 200 to 300 to 400, right? So you're just basically taking how much energy you're putting in and you are exceeding that with how much energy you actually burn out. That's the part I think that trips people up. It's like, you can burn energy right you can burn calories what we're talking about but if the calories is coming in is is like matching that that's what's called a calorie maintenance right if the calories is coming in is exceeding what you burn with the activity that you do then that's called a calorie surplus that's how you get big as hell right <laughs> so the deficit is simple it's just you have to have a acute understanding just a little bit of an understanding how many calories that you're consuming every day right so how much are you actually putting in your body every single day you just track that by just you know scanning food items or putting in a little my fitness pal or fat secret like i was talking about and then and then you just according to what the, what happens with your weight you either decide if you're going to burn more calories by being more active right or if you're just going to come down on the calories you can consume that's it the deficit is the amount of calories that you burn you know you know subtract the amount of calories that you ate that's it that's the deficit so if i burn if i can if i could track how many calories i burn right let's just say you know my body burns two thousand calories on its own right this is this is what people be talking about when they be talking about your basic metabolic rate right 2,000 calories on its own. If I eat 2,000 calories and I burn 2,000 calories, I'm not losing any weight. That's not a deficit. That's maintenance. If I burn 2,000 calories, right, and I eat 1,500 calories, what's that? What's that, class? 500 calorie deficit, right? That's it. Boom. That's, your, that's the whole shit. <laughs> You're just doing that. It's just subtraction, man. Who knew? That that shit that y'all didn't like to do in elementary school, math would be so useful to your health, <laughs> right? <laughs> if that was helpful, type one in the comments. I want to make sure that that was actually 
beneficial information. BFB mm. <laughs> about to eat 300 calories a day. Hey, don't do that, man. <laughs> You're going to melt away and hate your life. <laughs> it ain't got to be that difficult, man. Trust me. How many calories have you burned on this one hour live stream? That's a good question, man. I was I was walking at the beginning and I have um I have the aura ring, but it's 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 charging right now. So I don't know. How many calories should I eat to burn fat? I have like 15% of body fat. Man, that's that's a very specific question. I, I would need to know how many calories you burn in really. But I think the biggest thing is just create a calorie deficit by just doing some quick math, man. <laughs> like, like basically do this, man. Do this. Take your body weight in pounds. I apologize to you motherfuckers. It's not from America, right? Because y'all don't use pounds. Sorry. <laughs> My bad. Uh, you take your body weight in pounds, right? You multiply it by 10. Typically, that's like a calorie deficit number for most people, right? Unless you really, really obese, right? You, you, you really are big as hell. Then you might need to come down a little bit. But like you take that number and you just hit that number for a week straight with calorie tracking and you should lose weight, right? If you don't lose weight, then you just eat under that number, right? So if I had like an obese client, for example, let me just give y'all some quick math, man. I have clients that are like over 300 pounds, right? take somebody who's 300 pounds you multiply their body weight by 10 that's 3,000 calories now i know if they was burning 3,000 calories on their own they wouldn't be big as hell right so <laughs> because i'm such a fucking pro at this shit i just dropped the calories even more so i i maybe cut 500 or more off to that depending on how active they are so that person may be eating 2,500 calories or less like some of my clients right now who are doing that and losing weight every week, you know, but you got, you got to know your numbers first. Some of you guys could just benefit from just doing that. Cause some of y'all not that fat. So y'all could just take like, say I, it was a guy earlier. He's like, yo, I'm 180. I want to get down. You just take 180, you multiply that by 10. That's going to be 1800. That might be a deficit for you. If you do it for a week and it's not just, you know, eat less calories than that. Yo, Maya Kemp, you, you had me talk about calories. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, moisturizer and lo what moisturizer and lotion do you use? I usually lose like the uh, the Vaseline for me, the, uh, the, the one that got the cocoa butter. You know, just because I'm black, man. <laughs> Have you ever tried intermittent fasting? Yeah, man, I've been doing it for eight years. Uh, can I work out while faster? Yeah, I've been doing it for eight years. <laughs> Thoughts on combining a can of Pringles with the glove and a sponge? Oh, yeah. You, that's wild. Uh, BFB is doing a warrior diet. Shout out to you, man. <laughs> Shout out to you. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, green not goblin how do you feel about the biggest hell comments i mean i think it's cool man you know it brings people joy and shout out to them for doing it all right guys well we almost it's almost time to wrap up i'm gonna drop the big belly blaster in the comments again the big belly blaster is designed to help you lose five to ten percent body fat build three to ten pounds of muscle right and actually keep your results wow enjoying your favorite foods if you're interested in that go ahead and get that free fat loss course the big belly blaster it's in the comments it's in the description of this video on every platform and it will help you to not be big as hell if you are big as hell <laughs> uh aside from that i think we good man i don't see no more questions in here just people showing love appreciate you bfb appreciate you coco uh yeah <laughs> appreciate you mike ox <laughs> yeah yeah appreciate you glock piper teresa i'm out y'all happy easter
Peace.